Hello, welcome back to theCUBE here. I'm John Furrier, your host of theCUBE. We are here at our East Coast location at the NYSC studios here on the balcony overlooking the show floor at opening bell this morning and a lot of great conversations. This is Media Week, AI leaders on the East Coast as well as expanding the conversation across many, many different topics. Ahmed is here, he's the CEO of Kiva.ai. Ahmed, great to come on theCUBE. Thanks for coming up. Thanks, John. Thanks for having So talk about what Kiva AI does. Give a quick explain one minute to explain what you guys do, then we'll come into this of the AI conversations. Yeah, um, I, I, I believe the future of AI is in highly specialized applications, such as finance, medical, dental, legal, uh, all the very complicated stuff, uh, not, uh, not to rewrite your emails. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, the problem is to do that, the number one factor that tells you if your model is going to do better or not is the amount and quality of your data. Problem is this data is very difficult to get, very difficult to clean up, very difficult to turn into high quality data. And that's what we do, we're the high quality data. When was the company founded? Where are you guys at in terms of funding status? What's the, what's the current situation? Yeah, we incorporated in March this year and uh, we just closed, we closed our pre-seed fund. We closed $7 million uh, in pre-seed funding. Uh, we're based out of uh, San Francisco, but the team is uh, across the world. AI talent is difficult to come <laughs> to. <laughs> Wherever you want to live, no problem. You know I, machine learning, you know gen AI, yeah. hey, no problem. Yep, yeah. yeah. So we'll, we'll fly you and do meetings. Tell yeah. me what you want. <laughs> <laughs> that was hard to get. That's cool. Yeah, um, yeah. and we're, we're backed by a number of VCs and a number of investors, such as uh, Bill Tye yeah. and uh, Jack Herrick, founder of WikiHow. Yeah. Uh, and, and a bunch of others as well. Yeah. Jack's a great entrepreneur, Palo Alto friend. Um, he had an office in Silicon Valley and you know, just started here. Silicon Valley connecting Wall Street's been a big, big part of our kind of a digital mm -hmm. and a community expansion. Um, those are savvy investors. Um, they see value in you know, entrepreneurs, but also vision. What's the vision that you have? What did they lock in on? What was, uh, what was some of the things that got them excited and energized to work with you? Yeah, yeah. Uh, so, <laughs> I I think I think a couple of things. The the, the ultimate vision, the, the way I see AI needs to happen. There's, you have expertise, very very specialized expertise. Again, finance, medical, dental, but that's those are not the same expertise as AI. So the future of AI, I believe, lies in our ability to build no code AI, so that the doctor, so that the analyst yes. can build AI with their knowledge without having to go very, very deep into the AI part. Yeah. The problem is how do you do that? You got to work your way backwards and uh, you need a bunch of foundational models and you need data. And of course you need compute and other things, but, but those are the two biggest bottlenecks. So the vision is how, do we, how are we able to build those highly performing foundational models you cannot without very, very large volumes of data? How do you get the data? Well, you start by labeling, annotating, yeah. and introducing human in the loop, get access to the data, build the models, turn that into a great user experience. It's a great vision because you see a lot of activity going on in two layers. One is obviously infrastructure. I mean, we love the, to geek out and nerd out on the infrastructure, faster processors, clustered systems, NVIDIA. Mm -hmm. But when you look at the human in the loop, um, AI is about the domain expertise of the, of the user. And it reminds me of the old days of the IT department where they were there to serve the business. And now technology is the business. So, so and back then, serving this was, oh, we got a user at cubicle number 1024, give them a desktop. Our standard is a PC and <laughs> here's Windows, virtual desktop, and okay, card key to get the, into the building. And that was it. Yep. The users just did their thing on the PC. Now the AI is ingrained into their job as domain experts because mm -hmm. they're one who are not only dealing with data, but throwing off data. So the user is not only consuming data that's provided to them through the app, they're also throwing off data yes. through their interactions, whether you're a doctor doing auto transcription of an appointment, mm -hmm. computer vision, which gives you a vision of the world, which is then that's data. So everything's yep. data now. So I got data coming in and I got sending data back. So the human piece are the domain experts that know the domain specific nature of what AI is missing. Mm -hmm. I mean, because you can't just throw AI at say enterprise use cases and workflow and data because it needs to have those domain experts. So I think these domain experts are the new IT quote, I mean, to use a metaphor because they're the ones who bring the value to the table. Yes. And I think that you're onto something really big there because no one's talking about this. No one's talking about the fact that the person who knows the knobs and switches of the of either the app or the workflow. I got mm -hmm. a patient coming in. All I want to do is serve the patient. I know what I do, my workflow. 
Yes. The service, the technology has to serve me at that point. Mm -hmm. Who trains that AI? I mean, this is the, this is the hard point. Mm -hmm. Take us through how that works. Cause I think that's what you're saying. I might get exactly, exactly. John, this is, this is a great analogy, right? So, so you think about it, it's, I think about printers or the computers, they wear the core, they were the big new thing yeah. until after a while, I was like, oh, I can use this thing to actually make my thing work better. And then new use cases started to pop out. So, so one of the use cases actually we're working on right now is a medical, a medical companion for doctors to help doctors uh, triage cases faster, take notes more accurately, translate notes between doctors when you do handovers or and between doctors and nurses and so on, reduce medical errors and so on. Uh, and it's, it's very interesting because when we first started with a the customer, they were like, I need you to have people with medical experience who can do one, two, three. I was like, hold on. How do you know that these are the things? How do you know that this is what the doctor wants? And they're like, well, we talked to a couple of doctors. I was like, hold on. We have thousands of doctors across specialties. Let, let, let's just, for the sake of it, run it by them and see what they think. And the feedback was overwhelming. It was like, no, no, that's not how I do this. Yeah. You're missing. By the way, the other doctor probably thought because they read something in the file or they saw something with the patient yeah. that they didn't write down, you're missing all of this context. I can give you that context. Yeah. So the whole thing started evolving into instead of them customers coming to us to tell us, I need your experts to do this, it's, hey, this is what I want the AI to do. Your experts tell me, how do I get there? This is where the low code, no code come in because you can now do code, code assistance to do that work. Yes. So, okay, so front end innovation is happening at the domain expert. Now you have this new apparatus with AI for code generation. Easy. Mm -hmm. But that should be responsive to the front end, the end point of service. Exactly. The doctor or whatever the use case. What's interesting is, is that on all the research we're doing on the Cube research is that a lot of the decisions get made on what happens at the edge yes. by the back end processes. For yes. example, take doctors, there's billing codes for stuff. Yeah. They don't write it down properly. No one gets billed. Yes. So you, you want to understand the back end, but make, not make that the, the requirement. Mm -hmm. Well, doctor, you have to take notes this way because that's how we charge, which has yeah. been the way. Yes. Versus now, hey, let the AI figure out that, you know, someone has anxiety that translates directly to this code. They mm -hmm. get a referral. Here's five referrals. So again, this is where I see the edge piece working. I haven't heard of anyone doing anything in that area. I know you know, transcription helps, but this has to be generative. It, it, but it maps is. to processes on databases and, and whether it's billing codes or other services that are connected. Mm -hmm. It's a connected ecosystem. It is, it is. And, and, and I think, I think to, to your point, I don't think any one entity can build the end-to-end -end of AI. Mm -hmm. I think it needs to be this whole ecosystem of practitioners, subject matter yeah. experts, front-end, back-end, hardware, software, and the whole thing. Yeah. And it's, it's, it's very interesting. You mentioned this example about, about medicine. A lot of times um, there are multiple medical codes, ICD-10 and others. So when you do the mapping, all of a sudden, when we do the mapping the way we're doing it, it's translatable anywhere in the world. Yeah. You're using medication, whatever, Advil. We call it, we call it Advil and the equivalent is Panadol somewhere yeah. else. And all of a sudden, a doctor in Kenya understands what this weird commercial name medication in the U.S. means and understands what alternatives they have yeah. and what the history without having to go through a lot of trouble. Yeah. It saves a lot of time. It saves a lot of time. And, and time is a big problem for, for a lot of these professions. There aren't as many. Okay, so you're hitting on something really big here. How did you get here? I mean, what was the uh, origination story? Did you, did you identify that the human loop was deficient on the gap? Was it a gap you saw? Was it uh, a personal experience? What's the origination story? Yeah, so, so it actually started uh, way back in uh, 2017. I was, I was at Amazon and I was interested in a whole bunch of uh, different apps. I was trying to solve problems. I, mean, I tried to solve problems and then figure out what the <laughs> tools. And, and then <laughs> it led me to AI. It wasn't, we didn't call it AI back then. <laughs> machine learning. <laughs> machine, machine learning, data science, yeah. this weird black box, whatever. Yeah, was a whole data, data value. <laughs> data, <laughs> data lakes. Yeah. That too. Yeah. It's more data. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and, uh, and I ran into a serious problem. Models were doing better. I had some of the best engineers in the world, some of the best researchers in the world, and we weren't doing better. And uh, started, started digging deeper into that and realized I actually need the experts to fine tune my data and give me that, that, that feedback. And I couldn't find anyone to do it. Yeah. And this was 2017. There, there, were, there were a couple of big players, but they weren't very specialized. And it was a very, very specialized application. So I ended up building my own operation. So built up my own data labeling operation. And um, I was like, this thing is 
I think this thing, a lot of people are going to need that. Yeah, yeah. And because uh, I'm, I'm pretty sure I wasn't way too off. Like uh, other people probably want to go through that too. And as I was thinking through this, I get a call from um, from Scale AI, uh, and uh, they wanted someone to lead their 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 human in the loop side of things. And Scale AI is is the, is the largest player in in the market today. They're thirteen point eight billion. Yeah. Uh, they were much smaller when I joined, and uh, I built the the human in the loop operation there. Yeah. And it started to show that this is not just a big problem. This is a very very yeah. nuanced problem. Yeah, yeah. That you cannot solve from ivory towers. And yeah. start getting really or deep. or generic models or generic models. Yeah, I mean, generic must fail. Yeah, you don't have the domain specificity of the, of the of the user. Oh, absolutely. And believe me, we've we've heard a lot of a lot of a lot of stories and and narratives that came through the years of oh, we can just get, take people off the street. Well, not if you want them to do dentistry. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, it's easier to teach a dentist to use a tool than to teach a uh, someone a gamer to 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 teach them dentistry. And uh, other narrative, oh, AI is going to replace all of the humans. Well, I disagree. I, I think it assumes it assumes that we're not going to develop any new knowledge, and it assumes we already took... By out. the way, I, I, I debunk that all the time when people bring this up, because that's a scare tactic that's used to kind of scare people to slow down with AI. But in, uh, when we started the queue 15 years ago, Hadoop was the big, yep. you know, big data platform. At that time, the same dogma came out. Oh, yeah, it's going to replace bank tellers. are going to be extinct. The ATM said the <laughs> bank tellers are going to be, and then Hadoop said... One, it never happened. There's more bank tellers now than ever before, yes. right? So, like, I mean, like, so it actually the opposite happened. So, yes. I think there is an uh, unrep unrepresented opinion publicly that just because a job has mundane tasks, mm -hmm. automating that away with trust and delegation with AI agents or whatever will spawn more creativity and more productivity. Hundred percent, that will happen. Hundred percent, John, and I completely agree. And and I've seen it in even in my own jobs. When, when I was working and I had to do mundane tasks, they just weigh you down. Yeah. And then all of a sudden you take them away and all of a sudden I'm thinking about things I've never thought before. I never had the bandwidth or the mental capability to think of yeah. because I never had the time. Yeah. AI scales intellect. Absolutely. If you do it I right, the human will scale with... I might use that if you don't. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Do <laughs> it Creative Commons, just link to the cube.net. No, <laughs> No, but this is the human in the loop is really valuable, and it's not a cliche either. Because um, again, what I love about cloud, you mentioned you worked at Amazon. Uh, we've been covering Amazon since I've been using Amazon since 2008, before they had custom and custom domains. But when we started looking at the, the impact of AWS around 2013, 2014, mm -hmm. 2015, one of the goodnesses of Beyond being great for startups was that it was horizontally scalable. Yep. Horizontal scale was a beautiful thing. But one thing that never happened was the SaaS vendors were doing self-service apps, mm -hmm. so the domain experts would just be users of that SaaS app. Yes. Now the horizontal scale still in play is distributed computing as well, but now the AI has to be involved. So you need the domain uh, experts in the app. Yeah. But apps talk to other connected ecosystem partners. Yes. So we have an ecosystem that is now connected and intentional mm -hmm. because generative AI is about data sharing, because data Absolutely. is is connecting and integrating in the app in real time. Yes. So this is this is a nuanced point that no one's talking about because except the cube because we're seeing it play out because ecosystems were hey here's who here's who, here's who builds on the cloud they're great SaaS players well now here's people who build on the cloud with Gen AI that work with the, each other mm -hmm. their trusted relationships beyond the API the data now is delegated and trusted and reliable and yep. so that relationship is an engineering assignment exactly okay because you're setting it up for scale mm -hmm. with Gen AI that's connected. Not just connect through an API, we're just saying, hey, pass a parameter. It's connected through intelligence. Mm -hmm. So you're, it's like a brain. It, it is. It, it absolutely so is. It's more intentional. Absolutely. You agree it, with that? I absolutely. I 100% agree. And, and you th th think about it, just uh, d d taking a little step back, at, at the core level, every job in the world, whether it's done by machine or human, has some things that, are, that I specialize in and some things I have to do to get my work done. Right. So I'm not a professional driver, but I, I, I have to commute or take uh, take the subway or take something to get to work. It's not my profession, but it's something I have to do. Now, with that scale, with that consolidation, if I can take away from the experts all the things that they do not specialize in and free them to do the things they specialize in, that, in my mind, is one of the main benefits we're getting from this consolidation and both horizontal and some vertical too, but not but more horizontal. It's just as we roll out the cube network with the NYSC as this wired community, what's interesting that what Brian Bauman and I discovered is, is that 
to your point, when you have this connected network, the people who specialize in something great trust and delegate the opinion of others who are great at something. So you now have a graph, yep. uh, a reputation graph of connectedness. Mm -hmm. So you're already seeing it play out where you have this delegation. I use that word delegation because that's yep. a means like, hey, you're my car friend. What should I buy? A Tesla? Or, <laughs> yeah, so I'm out in the weeds on this. Well, yeah, let me tell you. Or you come to me and say, hey, John, you know, what should I do for certain equipment I should buy or for my home laptop or my camera or, hey, what do you know about, you know, some of the video stuff you're doing? Okay, because you know I do it. Mm -hmm. You want, you know about it, but you have to hit the books. Yes. Right? <laughs> well, this is where agents come in. You start to see this human relationship start to be connected in these, that's why I like the word connected, intelligent ecosystem, because whether it's a network of people sharing information like what we're doing with the Cube and NYSE, founders sharing information, but it really comes down to getting work done or getting something done, whether it's play or work. Absolutely. You know, what, should I, what should I do? You gotta, it's, it's a prompt. Absolutely, absolutely. And, and this network, this network would be, I, I, I believe in the future, it would be a combination of humans and yeah. machine and working together because we don't need to do everything. And frankly, uh, to, to an earlier point, I don't think the future of AI is gonna be in one company. I think it's gonna be a co-op of companies, yeah. a co-op of agents, a co-op of, of, um, of off the shelf, a co-op of custom built stuff. And, uh, and of course, of course, other uh, free to use open source. Yeah. And that collective, those collectives are gonna build the future of AI because yeah. no one can, ha can have all that very, very specialized knowledge. We're in a place in the world where we have gone yeah. very, very deep into a lot of things. It's very difficult to become a polymath today. Yeah, yeah, it is hard. So, so how, how do you get around that? Well, you build a group of people yeah. that have similar objectives. Yeah. Or who you know, know each other. Who know each other. Don't have to be face to face all the time. Share the same values. Share the same values. We're gonna we're judged it exactly. Verified. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> and then and then when you have a problem, I'm not coming to you. Hey, by the way, here's a nice tool. Here's a, here's a nice steering wheel for the car you want to buy when you buy it. I don't know what's going to happen. No, no, no. I'm going to offer you a solution, which is transportation. How about this? I'm going I'm to give you a better way to get to, from home yeah. to work every day that's going to save you this much time yeah. versus here's a steering wheel. And by the way, here's a, here's a train ticket as well. Yeah. You figure it out. That's why I think you're onto something pretty big here because I think the front-end application, the user, they're also throwing up data, whether it's a doctor, someone in transportation, or a cube host like me or other, you as an entrepreneur, we have things that we're doing every day that that is valuable, but you're now connecting it in. And, and the way I see it is, is that AI is that data layer of mm -hmm. trust and connectedness. It's a trust network. It's a uh, reliability network. It's about validating what happens. And that happens over time too. So yes. you have time is your friend. Yes. When you have repeated tasks. And that's why I think like the, the successful companies that are building ecosystems uh, it used to be, look at all the logos I got. <laughs> oh, wow, you're really killing, right? Okay, <laughs> need a lot of logos. Yes, yeah. invest in the company. <laughs> what we're seeing, you know, to use the baseball analogy, because where we say it's early innings, small bond. You're seeing yeah. um, ecosystems where the intentional relationships isn't about how many logos, it's about who's in it. Yes. Because you're relying on each other. Where it's, okay, it's not just a connected relationship like an API, mm -hmm. there's data trust and the security trust i mean gen ai is just another application yeah so appsec reviewed happens differently yeah remember the old days appsec review yeah you were to amazon you know that <laughs> oh, shoot appsec <laughs> review oh my oh, god geez. oh my god i can't use zoom they might be listening to our conversations we'll use chime no but i mean appsec review was a process yes. before that it was you know total like going to tsa and getting through an airport <laughs> you know, like, what's your data center? What's your backup recovery? I mean, it's this in, ex, in massive interrogation yes. of to get to the security and trust. Now that has to get automated away. So I think this ecosystem, who you hang out with, so to speak, in your connections to add value, whether it's business value or personal value, it has to be completely trusted beyond the connection, reputation, everything. Absolutely. Absolutely. And and, and there's, there's a, there's a, it's, it's, um, it's like how you build your very, very close social network. It's actually not that different. And we, we yeah. cooperate with a few other companies and we're looking for others to augment that, that go to. But it's, it's very, very similar. Do I trust this person? Do I like them? Do I want to work with them? 
Do yeah. I believe they share the same values or are they, did they just telling me that, oh, well, we, we agree, customer, we got to focus yeah. on the customer, great. Transactional, are they relationship oriented? Trans hey, how can I make money from him? Or they exactly, and it shows, it shows, are they, are they looking to get a bigger slice of the same pie or they're trying to make the pie bigger? Yeah. And at least for our yeah, yeah. low starting point, I'm just, I believe the pie is there, yeah. it's massive, and we've only discovered the first slice of it. Yeah, exactly. So, so there's no point in trying to divvy it up. Yeah. Let, let's go after the I mean, we are in a rising tide floats every oh, every boat, in my opinion. I think that's going to happen. Uh, talk about your vision and goals now. You talk about, I mean, talk about your goals. You talk about your vision. Love your vision. I think this human loop is a huge, is the application of focus. And I think and Jenny, I should rise to that. Not you? be dictated based upon their constraints of, of power and, and, and data. What's on, on your plate now? you got the seed funding. Um, modest amount of capital, so you're probably very disciplined. Yeah. Um, what's your goal? What are you knocking down right now? What are you trying to do? What are your key uh, objectives? What's your business plan? Yeah, absolutely. So, so but by the way, on the on the on the on the, on the capital side, I, I always tell the team, and, and this is this is how they see me behaving: is we're frugal, not cheap. Yeah. Right. Exactly. So don't, don't spend money on things you don't need to spend to. But but the engineer needs a twelve thousand dollar computer. It's not talk about serving. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> of course. <laughs> yeah. There's no bus in there. <laughs> <laughs> right. um, uh, so, so, so what we're focusing on is is essentially three things, and they go sequentially. So build, sell, and deliver. So we got to build really, really good tech that scales. Uh -huh. And to do that, we need engineers and, and the support system. And uh, then we need to sell it. And uh, after we sell, we need to deliver now we've been we've been very fortunate where we've been doing the building, and I was like, I, I want to build this in a way that's very very modular, very so service oriented. Uh, I can so that it's future proof. Yeah. And uh, I was starting to think about the selling and how's that going to work. And inbound demand just started coming, so we got very lucky on that. <laughs> I, like, I didn't know how they find that out. We're, we're, we're selling, we're offering and selling. We didn't even have a website. I was like, well, I guess uh, I'm, I'm not going to complain. Hey, no, don't complain. <laughs> hey, you know, just take take the inbound. I'll, I'll just take. I'll just look it out. Cost of sales is great. Now let's see it. Keep long term customer value. Yeah. <laughs> keep, keep the transactions up. No, but that's a good thing because word so, gets out. Exactly. You know, like so. Mean it. So we're building and delivering now. Nice, nice. Well, I think one of the things about the flywheel around AI is is that. You know, there's a little bit of a better mousetrap factor going on here. And, and I always said, you know, some people will poo-poo that you build a better product, people will go to your door. I think right now the demand is so high on tra on the transformation because mm -hmm. uh, unlike the uh, the dot-com bubble, although it feels like the user innovation is like the, like the web, um, the the dynamics are more like the PC server revolution in the mm -hmm. 80s and 90s, 86 to 96. That super cycle had many things going on, proprietary, mini computers, mainframes, yep. open systems. So open systems interconnect and open systems ecosystems now a big thing here. Also, you had the Wintel. You had performance of the processors mm -hmm. going faster, as well as the app, Windows, and, and the software market riding that growth as well. So you have that also going on here. Yep. And you have the secular shift of user experience. Mm -hmm. And the first time in my career I've ever seen that, I've been through all the waves for 30, since the 80s. I've never seen this before. There's always been like a disruptive enabler back-end innovation or front-end innovation, yes. okay? Amazon was a back-end innovation. Yes. Change labor, developer labor. Um, you know, uh, the web was a front-end. Mobile was a front-end. Gen AI is both front-end innovation and back-end. Yes. I've never seen both of those theaters exploding like this value. Yes. Maybe the PC revolution could match it, but it was still small compared to this because it's happening so fast. So this mm -hmm. super cycle, maybe 10, five years, I think, Five could be the number. I'm saying 10 because I like the number 10 better. But yeah. in every super cycle, the winners came out of the gate, guns blaring. Yeah. Maybe a two-year incubation period to get going. Cisco started in 84, 86 to 96. They ran the table with routing, then switches. Mm -hmm. And then uh, obviously the other winners were on top of that too. So the super cycle is about speed. Yes. Not so much about valuation or profit because the everything's being reset. Mm -hmm. I mean, your category didn't exist. I mean, basically it was applications, but that's inadequate now. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, as agents come in or assistants that are infusing into the apps, they got to have the criteria requirements built in. Mm -hmm. And you got to think about the doctor, not do a focus group. Yes. And then broadly <laughs> assume that it, that is happening. It, it's wonderful you mentioned that because we, we, we can't just have a focus group, to your point, with the doctor. The doctor has to be part of the cycle. Yeah. And that with 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 Gen AI and AI in general, 
the, the, the cycles are just so short. I think, I think we're going to see a lot of resetting and re-resetting that's going to keep happening. Yeah. And, and the common component there is you're either going to start, we're either going to start shifting yeah. towards those highly specialized people and enabling them and empowering them, or we're just going to keep building tech for tech. Both are needed, but for how long do you need tech for tech to go at full speed? without the application to support it. It can, it can go, it, where's it going to go? Yeah. Like we're going to build wonderful tech with no application. And that's why also when we think about it, we're not, we're not offering a service. We're not offering a product. At the end of the day, we're offering an outcome. The, at the end of the day, my measure of success, you can put whatever you want on paper, but the measure of success is your model doing better or not. If it's yeah. not doing better, something's off. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So take me through a, a scenario. I like the doctor. We've been talking about that. And in, uh, in your ideal steady state of medical serve healthcare, you mm -hmm. see? Uh, at the edge, the providers where the customers come in for yeah. the application, which is a medical yeah. appointment and service. What do you see success looking like there from a doctor perspective in the role of AI? What does that experience look like? What are some of the tech in play? How would you envision that user to provider relationship? What's happening in your mind? Yeah. Uh, so, so the, the, let's start with the outcome. So the outcome is that we can enable, we empower and enable doctors, one, to be able to pay more attention per patient, and two, to cover more patients with less effort, stress, and, and pain. Uh, and three is to be able to focus on the highest priority, highest risk patients first. So all those three things. Now, AI can help in a lot of those, including the intake form while you're driving to the hospital or you're going to the hospital. It's like, I have a headache. I have all these things. You can maybe talk to an agent over the phone that automatically triages the case and says, uh, by the way, maybe that's not very urgent. Maybe, yeah. or, or, hey, come in quickly. Yeah. Yeah. You will have someone ready. Or your you. aura ring is telling us you should be moving into, uh, again, it was augmented information coming in too, right? Exactly, exactly. Or, the, or your aura ring or your watch or whatever. And it's, it's beeping. It's like, hey, you need to see a doctor <laughs> like within the next three days yeah. and, and cut yeah. down on the red yeah. meat. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to cut down on yeah, more exercise. <laughs> more exercise, more exercise, more exercise. <laughs> I mean, to do that. And, and so, so now they go in and they go in and, and based on the priority, they know when to come in. They know, they know if they should worry or or not, uh, maybe they should. They need to bring someone or expect to stay for two, three hours because the case has been more or less diagnosed. And of course, there are a lot of hoops to jump through. And then the doctor comes in; they they automatically have all the cases triaged. They know where to pay attention. They know where to focus, and uh, all the notes are taken. You can go to another doctor halfway around the world. Your history is there. All the knowledge is transferred. So this is one in established medical practice. There's another where. Let's say in Africa, where uh, there's in a lot of places in Africa, there's a lot of poverty, but also there's a lot of land. So it's distributed. So the doctors usually they go in and they try to optimize their milkman routes yeah. or milk pressure routes, right? So instead of going to the highest priority or the highest risk, they just do the routes. This is not optimal. Yeah. So if I can have a way where I can track which and diagnose and triage cases early on, now the doctor yeah. can engage way early on, earlier on, and this could save a lot of lives. Awesome. Well, great to have you on. We love to do more. Great to have you in the Cube uh, and Wired Network. Great to have you in the Cube. We could definitely have you back on and get a super valuable point. Uh, for the last you know, 30 seconds to a minute we have left, put a plug in for the company. Looking to hire, you got twelve thousand dollar machines for engineers. We heard that earlier. <laughs> <laughs> They're really why so low? <laughs> they twenty thousand. Um, what are you? Who are you trying to hire? What some of your goals? Share some of the stats and put a plug in for what you're working on. Yeah, absolutely. So, uh, so we're we're a small team. We're about ten people now, and uh, we're constantly building and delivering. So, so we're looking for engineers across the board, full stack, front end, back end. Uh, we're also looking for AI researchers and AI scientists and AI engineers. And, um, and frankly, if you, we're generally also, given the early stage, we're looking for good people who yeah. can go figure things out and go solve yeah. problems. Yeah. So, so if, if you're excited about solving real world problems yeah. with, uh, with no noise yeah. or as little noise as possible, uh, please hit us up. And, and with impact too, it's human in a loop really does the emphasis AI serving the human while leveraging all the scale. Absolutely. And, and also there's impact from another point that, that a lot of our experts are overseas and there are doctors, you, you hear the story over and over again of, in my home country, I used to be a, a, a surgeon. <laughs> well, guess what? Those people now have options to make a lot of money in their home countries while still being a surgeon and a doctor. <laughs> so, <laughs> I mean, great to have you on the Cube. Thank you very much, John. John. Thank you. Okay, we are here at the New York Stock Exchange. I'm John Furrier, host of the Cube, bringing down all the action. This is our East Coast studio. That's our media infrastructure here where the subnet is New York. Talking to founders, experts, bringing that content to you. Of course, Silicon Valley, connecting Wall Street 
Cartoon Studios. Of course, cover all the events. Thanks for watching.